Hello investors and welcome back. Let's talk about GGPI. We have some dates that I want to take a look at. We've also got some macroeconomic indicators. We've got some news that I want you to pay attention to with China. I want to go over the technical charts and I want to cover the options. So let's get straight into it. GGPI, Polestar announced effectiveness of registration statement and dates of special meeting and warrant holder meeting. We do have a date of June 22nd, this is going to be a special meeting. The company will hold a special meeting of stockholders in lieu of its 2022 annual stockholders meeting at 930. And that's going to be on the Eastern time zone. Now, before that, we have several things that are going to come up. We've got these CPI numbers. We want to see that inflation is coming down and we want to pay attention to what analysts expectations are. Now on June 10th, we have another update on those CPI data, May 22nd, so that's a lagging indicator. Of course, we're going to be behind one month. So in June, we get the data for May, 8.30 a.m. There's typically volatility when this data comes out. Now, the FOMC meeting is June 14th and 15th, so you can see this is coming right up on the doorstep of June 22nd. So about a week before, we're going to have this FOMC meeting and the Fed is supposed to offload the balance sheet and he's supposed to start in June. So we'll have to see what happens there. So Edmonds also released an article. They had this posted on their website, tested 2022 Polestar 2 redeems itself, beats EPA estimate range and revised 2022 model succeed where last year's car failed. And the much faster dual motor matches the single motor's range. So this news coupled with the updated filings is enough to move this stock as early as tomorrow. Now, Polestar did cut their 2022 delivery forecast admit these lockdowns that are happening in China. And that's why I wanted to spend just a little bit of time talking about everything that is happening in China as far as, you know, their ADR listings, anything that you have that has a relation to that market is at risk. I would say that everything that is happening as a macroeconomic indicator with Russia and China conducting their first joint military drill since the Ukraine invasion, the way that Biden answered the question on what would happen if we did invade Taiwan, you know, the U.S. would take action. And I just can't imagine that would be a good thing. And it looks like the U.S. is pressing Taiwan to buy weapons more suited to win against China than every company. I mean, China is embedded into a global network that we've been tapped into for a very long time. And as you see this nationalism start to take shape and hold, where we're realizing that we have to do more things within our own country, and this is happening with the Eastern European conflict also, you're seeing all of these stocks that are tied having to make changes. So NVIDIA, we've got other companies such as Starbucks and Adidas sneakers that are also having impacts. I mean, everything from the iPhone and even Airbnb pulling out. I mean, you could go through and find article after article of this nationalism versus this global economic standpoint of where we're more tied in globally and you're starting to really see people start to pull back from these high risk areas that are causing fluctuations within these businesses. So if you look at China briefing, just to see what's going on with this impact, you can see, still see that they don't have it completely under control. China has recorded nine high risk areas and 42 medium risk areas. And this is as of 10 on the 25th of May. So let's take a look at the options and then we're gonna take a look at the charts. If you're looking at an options play, I would say you want to stay very close to in the money. I would say that you want to be in $12.50 or $15. I wouldn't go further outside of this. If you can't get in at this price, I would just be patient and wait for the market to pull back because it potentially could. All right, let's take a look at the charts. But before we do that, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and let's get back into the video. So if we take a look at the charts, you can see right here on May 10th and May 11th, we were below the 30 on the RSI, signaling that this was oversold and now it's starting to try and pick 
back up. It looks like it found support here. So let's put a line in right here where this is a potential buy range. So anything here at about 10, 11 is going to be extremely low. Now, will we be able to come in with this news? Will we be able to get in at 10, 11? I'm not sure if you're looking to just own shares on this stock, you know, that would be a low price. But I would say that if you can get in under 1041, 1041, let me plot this in and we'll take a look back. I mean, 1040 is close enough. If we come back here and look, you could see that this is also showing you that it has level of support in this range. So I wouldn't want to buy any higher than that. You can see we're starting to meet resistance here at 1060, as close as you can get to $10. Obviously, this is going to be your buy range. And if we look back to see how far down this has fallen, let's take a look at this peak period up here, right here at about 1328 is where it fell and it came down to this point right here and if we take a look at what that is that was about a 23 percent fall now if we come back here and we look at this peak when there was peak excitement now of course economic conditions are a lot different so this is not going to be the same but if we come down here to this area you can see that we have a 37 percent potential gain. So I would say anywhere between 23 and 37 percent is what you want to look at as far as a run up in this price leading up to that acquisition or not acquisition, but that merger, the announcement date. You know, we want to keep that conservative range and just know that that's where we might meet some resistance in the future. Another thing we could take a look at is we could look at our moving averages and if you want to darken this up so that way it's just a little easier to see, you can actually change this 20 on your moving average and make it white so that way it's a little bit easier to see. And then go ahead and zoom in and take a look at your 30 minute or even your 5 minute chart to see when it's below this 20 on your moving average or your EMA. And below here is where you're going to find support. And then when it starts to get above this and hit that next color on your chart, this 50, then it starts to pull back. So you can also be patient and wait for this to come under your 20 on your EMA and not just draw that line in, but look for it to hit on your 30 minute chart down here on your RSI pick up support, for example, right here. You're going to be able to draw that in very clearly. 10, 11, you see it's pulling down under this 20 on the EMA. And then as it starts to get above that, now not everybody <laughs> has the ability to sit behind their computer and look at the charts. But when you've got time at the end of the day just to study these patterns, if you plan on buying it, it's very beneficial to take a look at the charts so that way you can understand uh, as this gets closer to the blue line here or the 200, you can see it's got a pretty pretty hard pull back there. So this was on, and this is recent. This is May 13th. This isn't that far away, but also it's getting out of bed on the RSI or it's exceeding that 70 on the RSI. Now, it doesn't always have to get up here to the 70. It could just get over the 50 on the RSI, but you have to to see that pattern. So expect this to in the morning as, as we start the pre-market to approach this 70 on the RSI and pull back and maybe it'll start to sit on top of this line, barely touch it, but look for those patterns. You can see this wave pattern here, but it's starting to sit on top of it and it could start to go up. We'll have to see what happens, but right here looks like there could be a pullback period right here at about 1038. I think we're sitting at about 1030 right now in the post market. That's all I got. I hope this helped you. If it did, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button. And there is a link in the comments below. If you want to get six free shares by opening up a Weeble account with only one penny, I would recommend doing that. See you in the next video.